In the name of Allah, the merciful, we are still in domain A, and our next element is A.2, Infection Prevention and Control Department. The total number of elements is 8, an activity for editing document, staff interview, observation, and the score will be 0, 1, 2, not applicable. A.2.1 for hospitals greater than or equal 150 beds. The director of the IBC department is full-time employee qualified in IBC through certification, training, and experience for minimum of two years and is evaluated by personnel file and interview. Review the following document in personnel file, assignment letter, job description, CV certificate and the training evidence. Interview number one, IBC director to assess his, her knowledge and the skill about IBC. Number two, ask about his, her involvement in development, review of policies and procedure. Number three, ask about our role in surveillance activities and implementation of IBC measures to assist his hair orientation about all area of the hospital. Number four, ask how the time is split among the data management, policy and procedure development, education, employee health, quality improvement, program development, counseling, and manage potential outbreak. A2.2 for hospital less than 150 beds. The director of the IBC department is a full time employee qualified in IBC through the certification, training, or experience for a minimum of two years and is evaluated by personnel file and interview. Sub element 2.1 and sub element 2.2 have similar assessment methods. A2.3, the director of IBC program report directly to the highest administrative authority, general director or medical director of the hospital and is evaluated by document. Review number one, organization chart should be clearly delineated that the IBC director is directly reporting to top management. Add note to assistant assigned designee a quality director or any other administrative personnel. Number two, ask for any request letter from the IBC and check its address to who. A.2.4, the facility has IBC staffing ratio of not less than one full-time practitioner for every 100 bits to accomplish the task required merely of IBC program in an effective manner and is evaluated by document and interview. Review the following document. Number one, IBC department organizational chart. Number two, document stating bed capacity of hospital including ER beds, dialysis beds, chairs, dental chairs, D cases, and others. Number three, compare the number of IBCs with the bed capacity and calculate the required number of IBCs practitioners as follows. One to 100 beds, one IBC practitioner is needed. 101 to 200 beds, two IBC practitioners are needed. 201 to 300 bits, three IBC practitioners are needed. 301 to 400 bits, four IBC practitioners are needed. 401 to 500 bits, five IBC practitioners are needed, and so on. In review number one, staff about work distribution and responsibilities in the IBC department. Number two, ask about the duration of rotation in each assignment unit and daily activity. A 2.5, an additional one full-time IBC practitioner 
is staffed for every 30 beds in a critical units. Example, ICU, BCO, ER, burn unit. To accomplish the task required merely of IBC program in an effective manner and is evaluated by document and interview. Review the following documents. Number one, organizational chart of IBC department. Number two, document showing bed capacity of each critical care unit, where the ventilation and the hemodynamic monitoring are routinely performed. Number three, match the requirement of additional IBC practitioners with the bed capacity for each critical unit as follow. A, less than 30 beds, no additional IBC practitioner is needed. C, 60 to 89 beds, two additional IBC practitioners are needed. D, 90 to 119 beds, three additional IBC practitioners are needed, and so on. Interview number one, IBC staff about work distribution and responsibilities related to critical care units. Number two, ask about the duration of rotation in critical care units and daily activities in the assigned unit and how they are managed activities. A 2.6, an additional one full-time IBC practitioner is staffed for every 120 dialysis patients per day to accomplish the task required merely for IBC program in an effective manner and is evaluated by document and interview. Review the following documents. Number one, organizational chart of IBC department. Number two, document show the number of dialysis beds, chair in hemodialysis unit. Number three, numbers of dialysis session done per day. Number four, match the requirement of additional IBC practitioners with the number of dialysis patient each day. Less than 120 dialysis patients per day, no additional IBC practitioner is needed. For 120 dialysis patients per day and above, an additional IBC practitioner is needed. In our view, number one, IBC practitioners about distribution of work and responsibility in the hemodialysis unit. Number two, ask about the duration of rotation in the dialysis unit and the number of dialysis sessions per day and how they are managed activities inside unit. A, 2.7, ICB practitioners are qualified in infection control through certification, training, or experience for a minimum of one year and is evaluated by personal file and interview. Review the following document in personal file, assignment letter, job description, CV, certificate, and training evidence. In a review, number one, IBC practitioners to assess his, her knowledge and the skill about infection control. Number two, ask about their activities in daily IBC rounds. Number three, ask about their role in surveillance activity and methodology of the surveillance data collection, CDC, NHSN criteria. Number four, during the entire audit visit, knowledge and orientation of IBC practitioners about IBC activities can be easily assessed. A. 2.8 IBC practitioners have update infection control skills and knowledge through continuous medical education program and attendance in IBC scientific activities and is evaluated by personal file and interview. Number two, departmental continuous educational activities conduct inside the hospital. Check for schedule of CME activities, content delivered, and attendance sheet to ensure 100% of IBC staff has attended with the competency assessment. 
Review the following documents. Number one, personal file to check for evidence of attendance in IBC scientific activities. Local, national, international infection control conference, workshops, seminar, symposiums. Check for valid certificates. In review, number one, IBC practitioners to assess his, her knowledge and the skill about infection control. Number two, ask about their activities in daily IBC rounds. Number three, ask about their role in surveillance activity and methodology of the surveillance data collection, CDC, NHSN criteria. Number four, during the entire audit visit, knowledge and orientation of IBC practitioners about IBC activities can be easily assessed. Thank you for listening.